Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about science. In this video, I'm going to compare Sweden's approach of herd immunity versus the New Zealand approach of no immunity. Sweden never closed down their borders, their public schools, their restaurants, or their bars. Their goal was to get the population to herd immunity as quickly as possible so that they could return to a normal life. It was just reported that their economy actually grew during the first quarter. It's likely that their economy turned down during the second quarter, but they're not suffering the devastation which occurred in countries which did lock down. The world's economy is largely global, and there's no way they could have avoided the fallout from the massive downturn in Europe and the United States. Sweden has been viciously attacked from all sides of the political spectrum. A few weeks ago, a well-known climate skeptic wrote this. Most obviously, herd immunity for a highly infectious disease like this requires that well over 90% of the population become immune. If no effective vaccine is available, that requires that greater than 90% of the population be infected, since this is a disease which has, under the best of conditions, a 2.5% fatality rate that means greater than 90% of 2.5% of 10 million dead Swedes. If we do the math, that comes out to a forecast of more than 200,000 dead Swedes. So let's look at what's actually happened in Sweden. COVID deaths in Sweden peaked in mid-April, and since then they've declined sharply. In a few weeks, they'll probably be down close to zero deaths. The total projected deaths now is in the range of 5,000. The estimate of 220,000 deaths was off by 98%. On May 31st, it was reported that Sweden had no new deaths for the first time in 11 weeks. Normally, Sweden sees about 90,000 deaths per year. Their total mortality for the year 2020, including the 5,000 COVID-19 deaths, will likely be in the normal range. Many of the people who died would likely have died this year anyway, as they are very old and sick. A number of countries, including Sweden, the United Kingdom, the United States, Italy, Belgium, and France, let the virus get into nursing homes. All of those countries ended up on approximately the same trajectory, despite the fact that they took very different political approaches. Now let's compare that to New Zealand, where they've had very few deaths and where they say they've completely eradicated the virus from their country. New Zealand is in the Southern Hemisphere, and the pandemic hit during their summer. Coronaviruses are killed by ultraviolet light, so their behavior is largely controlled by the sun. Countries like New Zealand and Australia have had very low death counts, largely because of their geographic location. But New Zealand's approach has been the exact opposite of Sweden. New Zealand closed their borders and they opted to violate human rights. New Zealand granted unlimited entry powers by the police if the police suspected violations of their draconian lockdown rules. This is pretty incredible when you consider the fact that New Zealand is currently having massive anti-police protests. Their Prime Minister, who granted the police unlimited power in New Zealand, is encouraging people to protest against the police. Another spectacular case of Orwellian doublespeak. In a few weeks, Sweden will be having few, if any, deaths from COVID-19. Their borders are open, their schools are open, their universities are open, and they kept human rights intact. Sweden will be able to move forward normally. And equally as important, the population of Sweden will believe that they're safe. They will believe that they have herd immunity. The psychological aspects of dealing with a pandemic are just as important as the physical aspects. Compare this to New Zealand, which will have no immunity, and they'll have to keep their borders closed to 99% of the world for a very long time. There is no clear path for them to end their isolation. New Zealand's economy is heavily dependent on foreign tourism. I know lots of Americans who travel to New Zealand regularly, but they can't do that anymore. Their Prime Minister brags about the fact that they're not currently having any deaths, but Sweden will likely be at that same point in just a few weeks. My trip to Australia just got cancelled because Australia has a similar policy of keeping their borders closed. This idea that you can hide from the world is not based on science or rational thinking. By closing their borders, New Zealand is not only preventing their population from becoming immune to COVID-19, but they're also preventing them from becoming immune to any new emerging flu strains. History shows us that isolated populations are at greater risk from viral epidemics. A good example is what happened to Native Americans after Europeans showed up. They were decimated by flu and smallpox. 
I wanted to go to Australia, but perhaps I'll take my summer trip to Sweden instead. I like countries which base their policies around actual science, rather than fear and mass hysteria. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.